How's it going, super friends? Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna have a look at the brand new Mezco 112th Collective Batman Sovereign Knight PX Previews Exclusive. That's the blue and gray version with the bat in the oval. This one comes in the Mezco cookie tin style packaging. I always am a fan of the cookie tin style packaging. Batman Sovereign Knight right here. Mezco toys on the other side, more Sovereign Knight. Mezco 112th Collective Pose, Play and Display. On the back we have the figure, all the accessories, and some promo images right there, as well as the little tiny barcode. And remember, as always, not a toy for children. Opening the tin up, we can see what we got in the first layer there. We got the figure with all the accessories. That's in the first layer of the bubble. Let's just pull it out of the tin. And in the second layer, we have the base, the bag, the wing clips, and the arm that goes with the stand. And now we can see everything all out of the package, and boy, there is a lot of it. Just look at all those extra heads, hands, and gadgets. Before we take a look at the figure, let's look at all this stuff close up. So for one, we have the first secondary head, which is a short-eared Batman cowl with the gritting teeth. Very cool. We have the long-eared teeth gritting battle-damaged cowl. Looks like somebody just ripped a part of his cowl right off, and you can see his eyeball poking through. Very cool looking too. And then we have the Bruce Wayne head sculpt with the peppered temples of the side of his head there, the gray hair, the blue eyes, skin tone looks nice. I like this head sculpt a lot and we've seen it before, so yeah. We've also got Batman's Sonic Distributor made for presumably calling bats to his aid, which you can see is different than the last one because it's got the blue on the inside of the disc where the last one actually had a solid gray color. Batman's also got his grapple gun, which is very much the same as the last one, except for it's got blue highlights. And he comes with an unlaunched grapple that you can just stick right in the end of the gun, like that. And he comes with one that has a length of line with it that has been fired off that, just like the other one, fits right in the end. He also comes with his bat drone, and this one, although it's the exact same sculpt as the previous one, it definitely is unique with its paint deco. Going with the theme of the blue and gray Batman, the one that comes with this one is actually blue with silver highlights, and the previous one is a gunmetal color with silver highlights. Batman also comes here with these here 10 tiny little batarangs. It's just sitting on the tip of my finger. That's how tiny these things are. Posing time. Take all of your figures out and get them all under the lights. And he also comes with one big batarang as well, just like the last time. Only where this one goes with the black and gold deco, the previous one went with a more black and gray sort of look to it. And let's not forget that plethora of extra hands. He's got two extra pointy finger hands for grabbing onto his grapple gun. I'm assuming these are actually what you would consider trigger fingers. He's got two open hands. You can see that the fingers are more splayed open for posability purposes. He's got two straight up grabby hands. These are literally just your basic grabbing stuff hands. He's also got two hands that I would assume are more for just grabbing his batarangs, judging by the spaces in between his fingers there. I would think that these would be batarang hands. And he's got the hand that comes with its own little built-in accessory, the kryptonite knuckle duster. And that's about it for all the extra hands. And of course we've got the stand, and you can just pop the bottom out, and then you can stick the arm right in here, and then you have the posy arm as well that, that goes onto the stand. We've also got these flight clips in this piece here that attaches onto the stand. I never ever use these, and I suck at using them too. I would definitely much rather just have a wired cape, so I don't use these ever. And then we've got the Batman figure itself, which is the main attraction. If I'm being honest, I like this one definitely more than I like the original Mezco 112th Collective Sovereign Knight Batman. It has all of the exact same details as far as the boots and the gauntlets and the utility belt and the cowl goes. It's all exactly the same as far as that's concerned. The difference is, this Batman has a completely different bodysuit, arguably better in my opinion, and it's a lighter gray which is also arguably better, in my opinion. And it also has the great big solid yellow oval bat. It's three-dimensional, and they've given it the Mezco treatment, adding their own signature detail work. Overall, the body scale itself, and how well it all comes together, well, that's a Mezco thing, isn't it? Typically, they're stubbier figures with bigger heads. 
Looking up closer at the initial head sculpt for this Batman, I mean, if you saw the previous one, then you know exactly what this one's going to look like, except for it's blue. I would argue that this kind of cowl structure works better with long horns rather than short. But overall, it looks pretty fantastic, it's been painted very well, the skin tone looks nice, no complaints whatsoever. The cape for this Batman drapes over his shoulders really nicely, it's kind of a matte color on the inside, and when it's hanging down, it looks really cool, it looks very, very comic-esque. You got the oval sticking out in the middle there that really catches your eye. This looks to me almost like the fabric from the 1966 Batman TV show. And again, I love the fact that there is just so much cape here for us to play with. I really, really like that. So no complaints at all as far as the cape for this figure, because there have been Batmans in the past, namely the cape that came on this body originally that was just kind of weird. It was leathery on the outside, but then this weird, ugly material on the inside. We don't have none of that here. This whole thing just looks unified and it looks nice. So, yeah, I like this a lot. If you're curious about this Batman's articulation and you've never seen a Mezco figure before, well, the heads are on ball joints. So you've got that piece of articulation there. The shoulders, they go nice and far up because they're on... I can't remember. I haven't taken the suit off in a while. I'm pretty sure that they're ball joints in the shoulders. You've got articulation here in the bicep. You've got your double-jointed elbows. You got rotation by way of a ball hinge right here in the wrist. You've got your movement in the abs right here, as well as in the waist. You've got the groin here, all kinds of movement and posability in the groin. You've got your double jointed knees. And I must say, I like the fact that the knee pads have been painted gray and they're not black like the last one. You've also got, do we have any movement at the top of the boot here? No, not really. And your ankles, which are on ball pegs. And in my opinion, that is the only place where the articulation for these guys really kind of sucks. It's at the ankles here. There really isn't a lot of movement and posability here with this Batman, or really most Mezco 112th Collective figures, for that matter. Here he is in comparison to the other Mezco 112th Collective Sovereign Knight Batman. I think after buying this one... Buying this Batman is definitely justifiable because they're different enough that I don't really feel like I've bought the same figure twice. Here he is next to the Mezco 112th Collective Batman v Superman Batfleck figure. <laughs> I love this figure too. And here he is next to a larger scale Batman figure, my Batman Dark Knight Returns Batman. Still in the middle of having work done to him. I'm doing stuff to the belt. I like this belt better. Coming through this review, overall, I gotta say that I'm inclined to think that this is a really good figure. Bang for buck, we're dealing with something that is a high quality Batman collectible. They've taken Batman's classic blue and gray look with the oval bat and turned it into something more modern. And so far I feel like the utility belt and the sculpted detail for this one, in my opinion, actually works better with this color scheme than it does with the previous one. This is a Batman figure that has great flow, good articulation, excellent sculpt and paint detail quality, and an absolute butt pile of accessories. Am I happy that I got it? Heck yeah! Do I recommend it to you as a Batman and a DC fan? Heck yeah! Go get him while you can! Out of 10 stars, taking into account the limited articulation of the ankles, which we expect now from Mezco 112th Collective, because that's what they always do, I have to give this guy a 10 out of 10. I can't take away marks for this guy for anything. I am so in love with this figure. And no! I'm not gonna marry it. But with that, I'm done. Those are my opinions, observations, and viewpoints, and I'm sure you're gonna have your own. So take the time to leave them down in the comments section below. If you've enjoyed my review today, then please take the time to give me a thumbs up. It only takes a moment. And if you wanna see more of my DC-related fan content show up in your inbox, then I invite you today to become a super friend and join the DC squad by hitting the subscribe button and dinging that notification bell if it tickles your fancy. And I'll see you in the next one. Have a DC day, everybody. Take care.